Hello, my name is Brian Stevenson. I've been asked to summarize this recently published case in The Lancet and I'm grateful for them for their enthusiasm for publication recently as this is really quite an unusual uh, situation that we, I find myself in. I'm a general colorectal and hernia surgeon and um, this case was interesting in that it covered all my subspecialty interests. It was a 58-year-old lady who presented as an emergency with some abdominal pain, some very mild abdominal distension. And on clinical examination, there was really very little to find. There was a scar at her umbilicus from a previously um, augmented umbilical hernia repair. And so initially, we just investigated as some simple blood tests which were all essentially normal and then we did a, a CT scan and the CT scan not only showed some gallstones showed some gallstones but showed that the mesh that had been used to fix her um, um, umbilical hernia seemed to be a little bit uh, close I think is the right word close to her slightly distended uh, large bowel her symptoms settled very quickly, she went home, she had no pain, and, but we reviewed her um, some six to eight weeks later in the outpatient department. Um, her symptoms persisted somewhat and I thought, mm, I smelt a rat here, if that's the appropriate word to use, and I repeated her CT scan. The first one had been an emergency unprepared CT scan, whereas this one was a more uh, thorough, fully prepared CT scan, and this actually suggested that she developed a colorectal cancer at the splenic flexure. So she underwent further investigations, including a colonoscopy, and unfortunately there it was proven that she had cancer of that area. As you can imagine, the operation was considered somewhat difficult even before we started because if the mesh that was seen on the first CT scan and the second one was in fact intraluminal, I would probably classify this as a rather hostile environment for a, a general surgeon. So we did a midline incision and we found that the uh, mesh had actually migrated intraluminally. Um, so we did a cholecystectomy uh, because she had gallstones, extended right hemicolectomy and a limited small bowel resection. And this is the specimen you can see that we found. So the mesh that had been used some four or five years earlier had actually migrated into the lumen of the intestine. Now the message here, I think, is that although you may see some mesh on a CT scan, it is always not the underlying problem per se. And it's important to consider repeat investigations. Mesh migration after um, uh, her hernia repair is a little bit rare. It can occur both after open and laparoscopic approaches and it's, it's irrelevant to the size or the type of mesh used initially. Migration per se uh, can occur to the small bowel, large bowel, or in the male subject, um, to the bladder. It, the overall incidence is really rather rare, but what's important here, I think, to, the message that we'd like to give to you is that if you find some mesh in an unusual position, it may not be the underlying problem.